And this campground is just a reminder of how great it is to be like under 40 feet. And this is the only campground you can get with like short notice unless somebody cancels one of the other state park campgrounds. So we would not be in Custer State Park right now if we had our motor home. And this is a beautiful place and it's a big state park. So if we had to camp outside of the park, you're talking an extra hour plus driving per day. And you get somewhere like Yellowstone, which is massive. <laughs> you could be looking at an extra two, three hours a day of driving if you want to get to a certain spot in the park and you can't stay in the park. And we have made zero reservations for Yellowstone. Um, it's still going to be the edge of peak season when we get there. I don't know if we're going to end up getting lucky and get something that's canceled or if we're going to have to drive in super early and try to get a first come first serve. It could take up to two hours to drive into a campground. So if you don't get it, yeah, you're driving two hours back out of the park and scrambling around trying to find a private park. <laughs> So one of the big things to do in Custer State Park is to do the wildlife loop road. This is one of those things you want to do what we say and not what we do because if you want to see wildlife you want to get here either early in the morning or at dusk time. We attempted to get here early but it did not work out <laughs> as usual. What are we going to see Hensley? Uh, hey there might be buffalo. Do you want to see a buffalo? Don't scare them away. Yep, don't scare them away. You gotta give them their space, remember? <laughs> don't go on the fence. <laughs> okay, it's a good rule. So no luck with Buffalo yet, which is the main thing we're hoping to see. So we're going in the visitor center. Hopefully they can tell us kind of where they're at. How fun. Yeah, so burrows here, buffalo here. Hey buddy. You like my van? Yeah, you want to see what's inside the van? Right there. He's showing out for you, isn't he? So see you later. So they're very friendly burrows and they are in the wild, but it's really cool how they will come up and let you pet them. Have a good day. Oh, can you see those buffalo, Hensley? Do you see them over there? Buffalo. See that buffalo. What'd you think about them? Uh, the white ones. You like them? Yeah. So with the buffalo, uh, from like 1850 to 1900, they decreased in population from around 20 million down to like, they say possibly under a thousand, which is crazy just in that 50 year span. You got places like Wind Cave National Park and uh, Custer State Park and Yellowstone and places like that that helped repopulate um, the bison and uh, keep them from possibly going extinct. I think the word buffalo comes from some French word like la bouffe, la bluff, la buff. Do you remember what that was? Does that even sound familiar? No, you don't know French? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. I Hens didn't take French. Hensley, do you know French? Yeah. Okay. Two cowboys, settlers, uh, they were hunting one day. And what they noticed was that the grass was moving in an unusual manner. When they came over to investigate, one of the cowboys moved away the grass, bent down, <coughs> the wind blew his hat off his head. That's how Wind Cave got its name. So, if you get down here, you can hear it. So 
of this entire path is 100% uh, natural. Like they didn't, I thought they might have blown some of this out or you know, whatever, but they did come through, of course, and pave it and put in some lights. But other than that, you know, this is all natural. So 95% of this box work stuff, is what they call it, is in this cave. So what stands out to you? Uh, it probably taking a three-year-old on an hour I and need, 15 minute cave tour and stuff. I need a chicken. You need a chicken? She, we've seen kids. Some kids, when they get tired, they calm down, they lay on their mom or dad's shoulder. Our hey. kid is like an angry yeah. drunk. Like she's Don't screaming. She is. <laughs> she just gets it's the opposite instead of winding down she like winds up and touring any tour during nap time is not a good idea no tours not. on their own especially or, in the dark uh, yeah. underground in a tiny space but you know she did good though it's just considering it, yeah it but. takes two of us to parent her Here's the most well-preserved skeleton or fossils that they have found. And here is Nathan and Hensley. Pretty sure they're over it. It's uh, crazy all this is in one place like this. So this was actually land that a guy had purchased and he was going to build In homes. 1974. Yeah, he was going to build homes here. So he started digging and came across these bones and then, you know, ended up selling the land and they've created this site where you can come and, and look and they're, they're, what do you say, they're fossils, not... Um, um, well, they're not fossilized like a lot of the dinosaur ones I found. When they're excavating these, they have to be really careful because they're way more brittle. Um, and so... Yeah, they only... And they, so it's a long process. And they only <laughs> even dig in the summer because and there's no, they can't have any heat in there or anything like that mm. that will affect, yeah. affect them. So it's a, um, it's a slow process. But. but this was a sinkhole back in the day and it filled with water. And then mammoths and all kinds of other animals, actually not just mammoths, would come and try to drink out that sinkhole because they'd see the water and then they'd fall in. Did you know? that there's like 61 mammoths they've discovered and they're all male. I didn't know they're all male. They're all male. No, I, I didn't make this stuff up. He said that they joke and say it's because men don't want to ask for directions and uh, that's why they're the ones that fell in the sinkhole and couldn't get out. The they're point is male. there's 61 mammoths in here and that's pretty cool. It doesn't matter if they're male or female. That's not really... <laughs> the female probably dropped her cell phone down there, something he's trying to get it for her. <laughs> they really think it's because males kind of like had to be on their own. They got kind of kicked uh, out of the herds and so uh, they were trying to find food and... Yeah. Um, and they've also found other, like what, six animals that are extinct, something like that? Uh, they found like a short-faced bear and um, I don't know, lots of other stuff that's extinct, which is it's crazy. Thing. And a short-faced bear is just like this massive bear. And so this is life-size. Like this is how big this thing would have been. This is a Colombian, which they found, didn't they find 58 Colombians, is that right? And like only three woolly ones? I think they found, I don't know, something like that. But there's the woolly one they found that in here too. The woolly one's actually pretty close to the size of an Asian elephant. Yeah, the giant short face bear. Good grief, look at that thing. <laughs> They've even got it set up where it's like ferocious. <laughs> Let's look at the size of the paws on that thing. 
It was the largest land carnivore in North America during the Ice Age. It ran up to 1,500 pounds. It could stand 12 feet tall on its hind legs. Go on, Hazel. You going in? Yeah, you're going there. I ain't going in there. You're going there. <laughs> Whoa. What do you think, Hensley? Could you live here? A lot of bones. What's, is there a story behind this? Or just... Yeah, they're saying that um, they used to make houses out of it. Oh, huh. In Ukraine. That'd be pretty cozy. Mammoth Bone House. Can you imagine running into one of these things? Well, we saw a lot of animals today. We saw what all these see. We saw buffalo. We did. We saw pronghorn, which is the fastest land animal in North America, I believe, right? Did I get that right? Sure. Saw prairie dog. We saw. Oh, we saw turkey. Turkeys. And then we saw stuff that was extinct. We saw woolly mammoth. <laughs> but we're now going to see food hit our belly, is our goal at this point. So. <laughs> <laughs> We've worked up an appetite, well, haven't we? Yes. Been a long day. Uh, this hot springs area is pretty cool. It is. Um, I kind of wish we had more cool. time to check it out, but uh, this would be a neat little stop down here. It's 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 real. It's got a friendly Hard feel to, to it. Looks like but, it's got a lot of history to it. Mm -hmm. and there's yep. a hot springs pool and really cool stuff to check out. Hensley's Somebody's sleeping. tired. You have no nap today. You've made it really fun, Hensley. <laughs> well, well, we're gonna call it a night. Get something to eat, and we will catch you guys later. Not in any hurry. But now he doesn't watch know out what to do. Watch now, out for the buffalo. Now he doesn't know what to do. See you later, buddy. Hope you figure out what you're going to be doing.